Digital fault recorder, in today's changing consumer needs and growing demands for power, the power industry is left with no choice but to come up with a truly competent and responsive power grid system. Households and industries now have bigger power demands, which in turn requires a power grid system that can accommodate this increase in demand. What is a DFR? A simple definition of a digital fault recorder would be any device that digitizes and records oscillographic type fault records as well as sequence of event type event records. The fact that the oscillographic type fault records have been digitized and saved in digital files would provide for the capability of transporting these files electronically from one location to another such that a person remote from the recording location can view and analyze the file. Since the purpose of the recorder is to record faults, the capability to record data at speeds adequate to capture faults is required. Digital fault recorder, the result is the continuous search for alternative power sources and the development of a smart grid, one that makes use of intelligent energy measures, smart meters, and appliances. One such smart device that's gaining popularity today is the digital fault recorder, a device that's used in con conjunction with a synchrophaser, another smart device for a smart grid. The DFR is an important device used in the energy sector which can prove helpful in the monitoring of power grids and ensure the reliability of electrical supply. DFRs has three types of recording mechanism, high-speed disturbance recording of the instantaneous waveform signals of both current and voltages. Low-speed disturbance recording that is used to capture both long-term and short-term disturbances. In this recording type, the DFR records calculated parameters at a relative high sampling rate 1 to 10 waveform cycles. Steady state recording that is used to capture min, max, and average values of calculated parameters such harmonics at relatively low time resolution. Commonly used two recording triggering methods, events that the DFR calculates from its input signals. Digital signals triggered by the protection equipment. A DFR with a continuous waveform recording simplifies the installation process and ensures data availability for any event in the grid. Modern digital relays include DFR function. The main differences between a relay with the DFR function and a separate DFR device are as follows. Sampling rate, which is usually higher for the DFR device. The amount of local storage and thus the recording duration is usually higher for the DFR devices. DFR devices can provide additional functions such as power quality monitoring and others. Protection relays do not need additional binary signals like pickup and trip, because they are already generated internal internally and can be directly adjusted to the fault recorder. Historical overview of DFR technology To fully understand the structure and power of a digital fault recorder it is necessary to get an overview of the preceding technology. Analog fault recorders AFRs devices were the predecessors to digital fault recorders DFRs. Some AFRs stored between 8 and 32 channels of analog data on magnetic tape. Once a record was captured, the tapes had to be retrieved from the remote location of recording and transported to a central playback and analysis facility. The taped records would then be plotted on strip chart paper. A power system engineer or technician would then manually scale the traces back to primary voltage and current quantities. Other AFRs employed light beam pens driven by analog vacuum tube amplifiers and galvanometers to write traces on photosensitive paper at the recording site. Regardless of their operational mechanisms, AFR AFRs suffered from a litany of problems including calibration drift, low reliability, poor signal-to-noise ratios, limited dynamic range and high cost of installation and maintenance. To make matters worse, AFR records from remote locations took several days to a week for data retrieval and playback to a plot suitable for analysis. AFRs rarely provided information in a timely enough manner to resolve operational issues. Instead, they provided information that might be useful for post-event documentation and verification of engineering calculations, protective relay settings, etc. AFR recording times and trigger capabilities were severely limited and no post-processing functionality was possible. A typical magnetic tape-based analog fault recorder is shown in figure. At best, the analog recorders provided very limited insight into the transient behavior of the power systems they monitored. Consequently, AFRs were installed on only the most critical substations and generating facilities. Only those sites could justify the high cost of acquiring a limited record of power system transient behavior. 
AFRs provided too little data too late to be of use for most power system problem solving issues. Issues. Until a reliable electronics platform with improved triggering, data storage and transmission capabilities was available, the importance of AFRs to power system diagnostics was limited. Present technology A present technology DFR is perhaps three or four generations removed from the first embodiment of the concept. In terms of a functional block diagram, a state-of-the-art DFR does not look significantly different from a first-generation recorder, however a great deal more functionality and computational power is contained within. Modern DFRs may be configured out to hundreds of analog channels and event channels. Multiple highly sophisticated digitally configured DSP base triggers are available on each analog channel. A state-of-the-art DFR is also capable of calculating virtual channels derived from actual channels. Calculated generator re real and reactive power and negative sequence generator current are examples of virtual channels. A virtual channel may also be used with trigger algorithms to capture records. Complex triggering logic based upon a user-defined map is typically available as well. Some of the technologies that use digital recording technology within the power plant environment include the following, distributed control systems DCS and process integration PI systems, these technologies generally gather and archive large volumes of data that are available in the power plant. Because of the broad brush nature of the data collection, the sample rates are on the order of seconds so high speed events are not captured. These systems are useful in the identification of long term trends. Sequence of event recorders, these devices record digital changes of state so as to be able to determine the sequence of the events that occur within the power plant. No analog quantities are available so waveform analysis is not provided but alarm and contact closures are sequenced. Phaser measurement units PMU, this technology uses time synchronized sampling of voltages and currents to calculate synchronized phasers. The benefit of this technology is that phaser magnitudes and angles are calculated in time synchronized with any other phaser measured using the same technology. The phaser snapshot of the state of a power system may be used in, in the assessment of system stability and security. Consequently, one cannot dismiss the importance of including PMU functionality in new DFR installations. Significant research is being done throughout the industry on applications of this technology. Standalone digital recorders, small PC-based digital recorders are available that can be used to record both analog and digital signals via isolated inputs that avoid issues involved with inadvertent mixing of electronic common, station ground, and neutral points. A typical device provides high-resolution recording with some limited triggering capabilities. Portable DFRs, some manufacturers have developed the full power of a DFR in a smaller portable unit that can be applied in temporary configurations. These units can be very useful for application to systems and devices where periodic problems are being diagnosed and unattended triggering is needed to capture the problem. The prices for these devices are generally higher than for dedicated permanent installations. How does a digital fault recorder works? As a smart device, the DFR has the capability to monitor and assess the low, medium and high voltage networks in transformer substations and power plants. The device is optimized to monitor and record any disturbance that may happen on the grid. Some of the processes and events that can be monitored by the digital fault recorder are short circuits, critical load cases, breaking operations of the transformer and power fluctuations that may happen on the line. In short, the device can serve as a reporting and management tool, allowing engineers to properly monitor the power grid or power plants. Monitoring using DFRs, post-event analysis The data captured by digital fault recorders is most often used as part of the post-event analysis process for significant events affecting the generator being monitored. The post-event analysis process is important following significant events in that it is the method whereby events are explained and root causes of failures are identified. While human perception is subjective, digital oscillograph recordings provide unbiased evidence of what happened and when it happened. Post-event analysis often can be broken down into immediate short-term analysis and longer-term more detailed analysis and documentation. Until a root cause is understood and corrected, 
significant events have the potential to recur. Root cause analysis is usually a process that takes significant time, time and effort to ensure correct results. While root cause analysis is of interest and importance to power plant managers, the short-term post-event analysis that occurs within the first 30 to 60 minutes following an event is often of more immediate concern. How does digital fault recorder works? With these benefits and advantages, the DFR is now used in different applications, in a diverse set of industries. With the information and data that can be provided by the recorder, an engineering or management team can easily analyze the power system process and its failures. Its use can also improve the efficiency and reliability of most engineering process. Multifunctional Disturbances Recorders Disturbances recording units have existed for many years in many shapes, names, and functionalities. The required capabilities are continuously increased as the grid complexity evolves and new technologies are introduced. This creates analysis challenges for the engineers. There are many factors to be considered before selecting the right recording device, from the events to be monitored to the recording time, resolution, parameters, and sensors accuracy. These slides discuss the various recording applications, the required feature for each application events type, recording time, etc., and the available options in today market. Types of disturbance recording units, disturbance recorder are split into four main groups, transient recorder, this group include recorders that have the capability to record instantaneous values waveforms of current and voltage at relative high sampling rate tens of sample per cycle. Some are also have the option to record computed quantities such RMS, powers, and even harmonics. These recorders designed to analyze system protection operations and circuit breaker performance. Change of state recorder, this group includes recorders that records the trends of binary inputs digital signals. These recorders designed to analyze control operation and protection systems. Long-term recorders, this group includes recorders that have the capability to measure frequency, phases, and RMS values of power computed quantities such as voltage and current RMS, powers active, reactive. Calculation are in a relative high sampling rate of 10 Hz to 50 Hz. These recorders designed to analyze complex power system events. Continuous recorders, this group includes PMU's phaser measurement unit and PQA's power quality analyzers. These recorders consider to be the most complicated and accurate recorders. Both PMU and PQA required to comply with strict standards that define calculation methods and accuracy levels. Types of events, power engineers are typically interested in four types of events deviated by the event duration and required resolution as follow, transients events, these are a very short duration spikes in voltage or current. These events are generally no longer than one by two cycle and are typically caused by lightning strikes, power outages, and trip circuit breakers. Short-term events, these are short duration events that might cause damages to electronic industrial equipment, outages, and other power quality issues. Voltage dips, swells and frequency rate of change are common events in this group. These events are typically 1 by 2 cycle to 1 minute in length but may be longer if multiple protection operations are required to clear the fault. These events are usually analyzed to determine correct protection operation, fault location or verification of system model parameters. Long-term events power swing, frequency variation and abnormal voltage problem are example of long-term events that may affect system stability. These events are relatively harder to define. Therefore, required some investigation prior actual recording. Steady state condition There are steady state disturbances where system operation is not threatened, but power quality is affected. This may include harmonics or subharmonics produced by the load and or the interaction between power systems components. Depending upon the type of phenomena being analyzed, higher sample rates may be required to capture the events and data of interest. Record length parameters may be defined. Types of recording mechanism depends on the event being analyzed sample rate, recorded parameter, and recording period need to be defined. There are three primary types of recording mechanism, high-speed recording, low-speed recording, steady-state recording, high-speed recording. High-speed recording is used to record the currents and voltage waveforms at relatively high sampling rate to display system faults and transients. The recording is triggered when the magnitude of an analog quantity exceeds a predefined threshold. Pre- and post-recording margins are also required to be configured. 
Before choosing the appropriate device to record waveform data, it is important to understand what the instrument recording capabilities are, as significant differences exist between meters in terms of triggering method, type of triggers, sampling rate and recording length. Care must be taken on the supplied analysis software features, as some software are simple viewer and some include comprehensive analysis tools such as FFT and other parameters calculations. Low-speed recording, low-speed recording is used to record short-term events such as dips, swells and power swings at resolution of 1 by 2 cycle to few cycles. The captured data are analog quantities such as RMS, phaser, or powers. Recording is triggered when the analog quantity exceed a predefined threshold. Pre- and post-recording margins are also required. Typical recording length is in the range of 1 to 3 minutes. Same as in the high-speed recording, significant differences exist between meters in terms of triggering method, type of triggers, sampling rate, recording length and software features. Power quality analyzer will most likely be the most advanced meter in the category. There are 11 major reasons why, independent monitoring of the entire protection scheme including the circuit breaker will work when relays fail. Monitors complete protection scheme main and backup relays, signaling channels, trip relay and breaker on one record. Record stored for all disturbances not just line trips meaning data can be used to identify incipient plant defects. Superior data to allow more complete analysis of pending problems as well as trip events. Cross-triggering gives time synchronized substation wide data to interacts with another. These systems are designed to detect faults, monitor protection system performance, and provide critical information regarding relay tripping and reclosure operations, power disturbances, and other system anomalies. They are essential tools for maintaining the reliability and efficiency of power transmission systems.